Okay, so welcome to this market exam question on the um, 2020 uh, DB mock exams. The axonometric axis is required for the isometric projection. 30 um, horizontal lines are drawn at 30 degrees in isometric projection, and the finished object is smaller than it is in real life. It, it gives you a foreshortened view of a clock are shown. The elevation end view and the 3D graphic of the clock are shown. Part A, A uh, section I, draw the axonometric axis as shown. All right. So vertical line for the Y axis. Okay. 30 degree line for the um, X axis and then another 30 degree line for the Z axis. Now, part two, draw the given elevation inclined at 15 degrees as shown. So 15 degrees off vertical. So 15 degrees off vertical, eh, off 90 is 75. So if you get your 45 degree set square and 30 degree set square and put them on top of each other, that's going to be um, your uh, angle. Okay, and wherever I went, want along the axis, I can mark in um, a set a 75 degree line and then the base of it is at a right angle there so just use your set squares and there we have the orientation of the elevation now I'm going to plot these distances 80 okay on the bottom in 10 and 10 and look this distance is 28 and this distance is 28 here from the center the radius of the outside circle is 28 so I'm going to pause the video and do that. I marked in those points and now I'm going to draw light lines that are inclined at uh, 75 degrees from each of them. Oh Jesus, that one was off there, my original 75 degree line. Sorry about that, so I'm going to have to check the baseline baseline is fine the original 75 degree one was off so remember the total length of the base was 80 the center is 40 then it went in 10 from the two end points at 80 and then these two lines are 28 each from the center now I'm going to mark the heights okay I'm going to mark these heights uh, 12 10 44 and 28 radius up along the 75 degree line so I'm going to pause the video and do that so I've marked those lines okay now I'm going to draw uh, lines parallel to the base from each of those points Okay, and the next thing I can do is start heaving in lines. So I'll pause and heavy in the rest and I'm going to draw a radius 28 circle from there, radius 28 circle, semicircle from this point here and then a radius 21 circle from that center point. So I've then that elevation marked in, so remember that was up 12, 10, Okay, this was 80 long, this was 60 long, so 30 either side of the centre. And these two lines were 28 either side of the centre, based off the radius of the outside semicircle. Now, I'm going to do the end view. It's inclined off 15 degrees. The base is 65 long. There's 42, and we have two angles here at 60 degrees, and the top is 26. Now, um, 15 degrees off vertical is 75, so... 
What you can do is take your 45 degree set square and 60 30 set square, um, put them sitting on each other like this as shown, and then you've got in 75 degrees there. Okay, and then to get a right angle, you can just simply switch it around here. Okay, and this is where I'm going to position my elevation. So the, the bottom of it is 65 long. Okay, and then these heights are the same what's in the elevation. So 12, 10, okay, and then 44 plus 28, whatever that is, that is 72, I think, 72. Um, these angles are at 60 degrees and this distance is in 6, that distance is 42. Right, so I'm going to mark the heights up along this line here and then I'm going to draw them across parallel to the base. So I'm going to pause and do that. Right, so I've marked them. Okay, now this part here is 60 degrees. Okay, so I'm going to get my protractor or my set square if you want, and I'm going to mark 60 degrees there. I'm going to heavy the line in there, and then I have to measure in six millimeters. And it's safe to assume that the next line is parallel to the 60 degrees. So it's safe to assume the next one is at 60 degrees as well. Just one second there now. There we go. Now I can connect these together. Okay, and then I had to measure along 42 here, up 26 at the top, or uh, 26 there along the top, so that's 26, it's 42, and then I can join them together, and then heavy these down, right? Now, there we have the elevation and end elevation done. So part four is we have to draw the completed axonometric projection of the block. Now. A line projects as a point when you look along its true length. So the front line here appears as a point right there. The bottom line appears as a point right there. Now, I could label the points, but I'm not. I'm going to try and just get you to kind of visualize this concept in your head. Right, so I'm going to bring this down at 30 degrees and this bottom point down at 30 degrees. Now. The two side points down at 30 degrees. So look, there's the bottom one, there's the bottom where they meet. That's your point in 3D. And then we have one on the axis there. I'm going to bring this one down. Here we go. And I can bring the back one down here. Right now, they're going to connect together. Sorry, I can't see there with the shade or the light on the visualizer. So we're going to heavy them in. So there's the isometric projection of the base block. Now I'm going to do the second block. All right, so this one here. So I'm going to bring the front or the bottom point down. Then I'm going to bring the front down. So it stops there. Bring this down. So there's one heavy line there already. Now I'll bring this point down. Now I'm going to do the top two points on the base block down as well. And they are heavy together. Right, I can bring 
the back down here if I wanted to and I'm going to heavy that up there So there we have the second block done. Now I'm going to focus on parts of the body of the clock up until a height of 44 uh, from, from the second block. So 10, 12, 22, 66 in total. So look, we're going to bring this point down here. Now I'm going to bring this point down until it touches it. So that's one point there. I can bring this down here as well. And they should join together. So I can heavy that in. Now I can bring this point down. That's them. The one of the edges along the bottom. I can bring this a point down. Now I have the front edge. Okay, um, then I suppose I can do then um, where it starts the curve. Okay, I can bring this point down and it's already been brought down from elevation, one of them anyways. The other here. So there they go. So these join together. And now I'm ready to do the curve, right? So what I need to do is divide the curve up into 60, 30. That's what I need to do. Okay, to establish points on the curve. So this is like orthographic uh, projection in question one and question two. You need a set of points uh, on the curve and you need a view in which the curve appears as a line to be able to draw it in and a third view in which it appears non-circular. So I'm dividing this up into 60, 30. I'll pause the video and do that and label the points. Now, so I've them points labeled, right? This is an elevation, it sits on the horizontal plane. This is an end elevation, it sits on the horizontal plane. So these two views share the heights. Now, if I wanna get these points here in the axonometric view or the isometric projection, I need to find them over here first. The heights remain the same. So what I'm going to do is bring the numbers parallel to the base and I can just mark it out on the side. And I'm going to take my compass here and I'm going to step it along or I'm going to take the heights and transfer them over here. So that's a height there. This is a height of two and four. So that's... 0 slash 6, uh, 1 slash 5, and 2 and 4, 3 and 3 there. Now I need to get those numbers here as well. So I'm going to just bring them parallel to the base and then the elevation to get the numbers out onto the edge view of the curve. So 0 slash 6, 1 slash 5, 2 slash 4. Okay, now I'm going to bring these points down parallel to the axis. Okay, so 0 is already done. Right, 1, one and 5. So I'm going to bring 1 down. I'll do that again. That was a little bit off. Okay, I bring 1 and 5 down. And I'm going to bring 1 and 5 down here. So I need to bring 2 and 4 next. So bring 2 and 4. So there's 2. There's 4. And then I need to bring number 3 down. There we 
there's number three and that's all the points in the back now we need to get them on the front so I'm going to bring three down until it touches three coming from here okay same with two and four I'm going to bring them down until they touch two and four respectively there is two one and five and then there's zero and six right I'll uh, quickly just pause this and lightly sketch them in I'll sketch them very lightly so it won't affect your sight too much so I've that done now I need to get the letters over to here so I need to transfer the heights from the elevation and mark them on the end elevation okay so to get the heights okay accurately we can simply just draw lines parallel to the base through the letters and you can get a height distance there so look just this quick example there you can do that now you're going to take your compass bring the nib to eye lift and we're going to transfer over here now to save ourselves getting confused by having tons of points here what you could do is draw a line parallel to the back here and mark there it helps save me get from getting confused now I'm going to mark in point i point k and j there okay h and uh, l okay that's going to be where a slash j a g is and then b and f right um so the rest of the points uh, b and f c and e and then d okay now i need to get those letters onto this surface here so i'm going to draw them parallel to the base so i'll pause and do that so is that done so it's the same concept look i'm going to bring a point the letter down i okay and i'm drawing the light line to here so i can easily follow where point i is on my actual sheet because it can be hard to see these things k and j okay i'll do do two more there at one time k and j h and l okay and then i'm going to bring k and j down okay then h and l Oh, just apologies there's going to be a fire alarm going off in the school now here shortly so there's there may be a bit of noise coming i will pause the video when it happens but it'll be coming uh a and g now we'll do b and f Oh, because it's hard, hard to um, follow that line I like to keep a pencil on it and then just do this for reference use my set square to help me figure out the line so C and E
and then D is the last one so it can bring D down and D down here until it intersects right now untape your sheet and freehand sketch these in so I'm going to pause and do that so there's the question complete all right cheers thank you bye bye